this is Leslie with the Live Animal Program. And I wanted to tell you, last weekend was World Turtle Day. So I really couldn't resist bringing you some really cool turtles to visit with today. And in fact, it was also my 21st anniversary at the museum. <laughs> so I wanted to also bring someone in particular this is Vanilla. She's been here since the beginning with me. She's a pretty cool animal. She's kind of a big deal. She's kind of famous among museum guests. <laughs> she also has grass breath, which I love. <laughs> Those two things are unrelated. So I'm going to actually try to keep Vanilla sitting here with some of her favorite snacks. But you notice I've got someone else with me. This is Poppy. She is a western pond turtle. These two together are California's only native turtles. Our native tortoise and our native western pond turtle. You know, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between turtles and tortoises? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. But really, I'm just so excited to have them with you. You know, I um, fell fast in love with turtles when I started working here. These guys have been around for 200 million years or more. What's not to love? <laughs> you know, something must be right about them. So we're gonna talk about, first of all, you know it was a turtle when I took it out. What makes it immediately distinguished as a turtle? Obviously, the shell. So turtles and tortoises, they have a lot in common. And as a matter of fact, it's okay to call them all turtles. There are just specialized turtles called tortoises, all right? They don't care what you call them. You can call them anything you like. <laughs> so it's totally okay to call them all turtles. Now, what they have in common, first of all, is obviously the shell, right? That's how you knew it was a turtle. But, you know, they kind of have a mysterious life to a lot of people. Often, people are shocked when I show them what it looks like inside of a shell. Did you know? that it looks like this. Have you ever seen inside? What is that? Do you have anything like this in your body, young ones? You do, kids, you do. It's your backbone, it's your spine, all right? And coming out here are the ribs, right? How cool is that? So is this a turtle's house? It's not their house, it's not their home, it's their body, it's their spine, right? It's part of their body. Oh, she finished already. <laughs> they have been like this for millions and millions of years. It's, it's, it's very unique among vertebrates, but not that crazy if you think about it. Here's a fossil turtle, for example, over here. Can you see how widely spread the ribs are along the spine, right? So that really kind of gives you an idea of how it formed over time, doesn't it? So that's something very important they have in common. Now I said it's not their home, right? Because can you crawl out of your bones and get more bones? Can you crawl, can a turtle crawl out of their shell and get another one? No, it's part of their body. You can't crawl out of your bones either, okay? So as animals who need to find the right temperature to live in, it's called cold-blooded, but ectothermic's a better word. When they get hot, they have to take their body someplace to cool off. When they're cool, they have to take their body someplace to warm up. So it's not their home, right? Imagine if you were laying out on the beach in the sun, is your backbone gonna protect you from the weather? No, it's not gonna do that. Now, what does this fancy backbone, their shell, protect them from? I bet you know. Any guesses? Predators, right? Turtles are actually food for a lot of different animals. So when they're nervous, they can hide in their shell and it's pretty good protection. Here's a really cute picture of a musk turtle hiding. I mean, come on, how cute is that? <laughs> but you can still see his little nose and his little fingers sticking out, right? So let's be kids, kids out there, let's be turtles for a second. Crawl along with me, and if danger comes along, let's say it's a coyote. Ow, ow, ow! It wasn't very good coyote. What are you gonna do? You're gonna hide in your shell. But remember, keep your nose and your eyes 
ready to ready to run, all right? So it's pretty good defense against predators. In fact, big shells can be defense against oh, big predators. <laughs> this is a sea turtle shell. Is that incredible? Oh, so yeah, really good defense. Not a particularly great home. All right, so how do, oh, I'm sorry, I scared her a little bit. She gave you a little sample. So how do we tell them apart? What are some of the differences? Well, the clues lie in their little feetsies, all right? Take a look at Vanilla's feet. I'm gonna lift her just a little bit for a second, all right? Look at those big, stumpy, elephant-like feet, all right? Now compare that to, this is taxiderm, a sea turtle, okay? Sea turtle, slick, long body with these very paddle-looking feet, right? So that tells you where does she spend most of her time? In the water, of course. Now they do come out sometimes. Any guesses why all turtles need land for something? What is it they need land for? I said for warming up, right? They need to go someplace warm. If they gotta get out of the water, they need to warm up. But what else might they need land for? Here's a hint, they dig a little hole and they put eggs in it. So they all have to come on land sometime, right? So the sea turtles, paddly feet for swimming around, all right? Compared to the tortoise's feet, I've got a cute little picture here for you of a big stumpy tortoise-like foot. Feet like that are gonna be happiest on land, right? Now tortoises can sorta of swim. They're not very graceful about it. But I did see that happen recently, it was really cool. Uh, but they're happiest on land. And so, out in the desert, there's a little desert smorgasbord here. What's Vanilla going to find to eat, and where is she going to go hide out there? Right? So, for starters, those feet, she also does this a lot of her life, but she's not swimming. She's doing what? In the soil, digging. Right? They dig these really big burrows in the soil. And actually, they dig all the time. That soil is very rough out there. So Vanilla even digs in her sleep. They do it one grain at a time. It's pretty cute, you guys. Okay, so out there in the desert, she's gonna find all sorts of things to eat. When they're young, they're a little bit omnivorous, actually, and there's other tortoise species that are omnivorous, but when they get older, they really like to eat grasses, hence the grass breath, herbs, flowers, okay? She doesn't really eat a lot of green beans out there in the desert, but this is kind of like tortoise brownies. I wanted to make sure she stayed right here for you, so I gave her the ultimate treat, green beans and snap peas. In here at the museum, she also eats grasses, herbs, and flowers, just like out in the desert. Now, just because, oh, I see someone mentioned nopales, absolutely. She sometimes can crunch right down on cactuses, nopales, in particular, uh, and cactus fruit, the tunas. She loves them. How does she do that? She uses, look at that beak. Can you see? It looks like a little shark almost. She has a very sharp keratin sheath over her mouth, over her bones, and it helps her cut right through the food. They love to eat cactus fruits. In fact, they eat it so much in the spring Here's a, a picture of our desert tortoise, Sage, who's got so much cactus fruit on his face, it looks like he's wearing lipstick. <laughs> and this happens in the wild, too. They get this, the fruit all over their face. Because listen, just because they're herbivores, don't think for a second this is not a tough animal. They are survivors. Out in the desert, they have to put up with extremes, serious extremes. They go for long periods with no food. And honestly, long periods without a whole heck of a lot of water either. And in the spring, they have to try to catch up and get all those nutrients while they can. So here's one, a tortoise who's eating, who had eaten so much fresh greens that he's got green lipstick. So now you know tortoises wear lipstick. <laughs> they also can go for long periods without water because they can carry 30% of their body weight in water around. That's like me hauling around this much water all summer long and recycling it in my body. That's a lot, right? Sometimes 
it's the quietest animals that can be the most surprising, right? So, we talked about this little tough survivor. Now let's talk about another type of turtle. You know, a lot of people think, oh, tortoises live on land, turtles live in the water, and that's the end of the story. No, that would be boring, right? There is a world of turtles out there. There's pond turtles, mud turtles, musk turtles, box turtles. It's a world of turtles. There's so much diversity. So what can their little feetsies tell you about their little lifestyle? So I'm going to be actually inviting Poppy to have some lunch with you guys, too, in just a moment. <clears throat> but I wanted to show you a little bit of their feet also gives you a clue about their lifestyle, right? These stumpy elephant-like feet, they're going to catch what they can catch easiest, which is plants, right? Plants don't run very fast. But you need speedier feet for a speedier life here. So we've got some feet that are a little bit like, ah, warm, dry land in the front. And in the back, they kind of paddled a little bit like, ooh, party in the pool, right? Party in the pond. <laughs> oh, are you done already? Stay here and keep eating, all right? Here's a picture of one a pond turtle spreading out her back feet. Is that cute or what? Look at that. So those back feet help them be speedy, but they also act like little solar panels. What she's doing here is warming up in the sun. Isn't that cute? It's really cute. They also can dig really neat little tiny nests with those back feet. They're really adept at it. When we're done here, go on YouTube and search pond turtle digging nest. It's really cute to see a pond turtle using its back feet like that. Okay, Vanilla says she wants to go on a walkabout while I feed Poppy. Boy, what a mess you made. All right. So what's life like in the pond for Poppy, okay? Imagine what a real pond looks like, right? What is she gonna eat? I'm not talking about those city ponds where there's like no food and unfortunately people dump their turtles. Please don't do that, okay? A real pond has a muddy bottom and lots of life in it. So imagine a pond. What is a turtle gonna find to eat in the pond? So yes. Vegetation, you might have said, absolutely. They might eat some vegetation. But also, they'll kind of eat whatever will fit in their faces. They might eat some insects. I've actually got a worm here for Poppy. Let's see. You gonna show them what a good, chompy little eater you are? Oh, you're reaching out of the water. They might eat some insects, right? They might eat some fish. I also have some smelt in here. Or no, these are silver sides fish in here for Poppy to eat. There she comes. They might eat frogs. They might eat something dead that fell to the bottom of the pond. They might eat small mammals. They might even eat birds. You heard me, birds. See how Poppy was just sticking her face up out of the water there? That's how they take big animals, right? Whoops, I dropped it. You'll find it in a minute. They might swim up to a big bird grab a hold, and they do that by just sticking their face out of the water just enough so they can sneak up, right? They can take down something bigger than them, often because there's other turtles around helping. Now, it's not really a helping thing. They're not cooperating. It's more of an opportunity. <laughs> so that's how they might take down a rather big animal. You know, they're almost like crocodilians in that way. She's, she's kind of my little crocodile. <laughs> That's rather surprising for a lot of people to realize that turtles can be tough little carnivores too, little omnivores. So I hope you enjoyed sort of hearing about the different lifestyles of turtles. They all love land to a certain extent, right? But, you know, some of them swim in it almost full time. Some of them hunt in there but stay close. And some of them carry the water around in their body. So different relationships to water with these guys. But they're all still turtles, also known as colonians. So uh, tell me in the comments if you had a good time or if you have any questions you'd like to leave there for me. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And be sure to follow 
our live animal program Instagram at NHMLA underscore live animals. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll see, hope I'll see you again next Tuesday. Cute little animals, aren't they? Such mysterious little guys.